Hi, and welcome to Quick and Easy Quickies. Do you have an ATAM switcher? Do you wish you could open more than one copy of the control software in your computer at the same time? Well, today's quick tutorial is on how to run multiple instances of the ATEM control software on your computer utilizing a second user profile. So you might ask, why does anyone need to run a second instance of the ATEM control software? Well, maybe you have two monitors and you'd like to see a combination of various windows at the same time. The switcher controls, the audio console controls, the camera controls, or the media players. Or maybe you have two ATEM minis running on the same network like I do, and you'd like to have control of both running simultaneously on one machine. If any of that sounds appealing or useful, then this is the tutorial for you. Please keep in mind though, this tutorial is for PC only as I haven't yet discovered a way to duplicate this on a Mac. Yes, and before you jump into the comments to tell me otherwise, I know you can create a script on your Mac with the script editor to launch multiple instances of certain apps, but that workaround doesn't seem to apply to the ATEM software control. I know, I've tried. Of course, with that said, if you know of a successful workaround for this issue, I'd love to know about it, so please do let us know in the comments. And remember to please like and subscribe if you find this tutorial useful. It goes a long way to helping the channel grow and succeed. Also, if you don't yet have your own ATEM, I'll include links to pick one up in the comments. Okay, let's get to it. The first thing you're gonna need to do is create a new user profile. And I'll note a couple of things here. If you're using a very small hard drive in your computer and you don't wanna lose space to another user profile, then honestly, I wouldn't bother following the rest of the walkthrough. If you're not concerned about the additional disk space, however, then here's the next item to note. Because of how Windows likes to log in users, you're gonna to need to create another Microsoft account. This means you're gonna need an additional email address to use. If you don't already have a secondary address available to you, my suggestion is create a free Gmail account that you don't really care about. You can always set that address to forward to your real address, you know, should you want to use it or be notified of anything coming into it, or if you feel like you might forget your second user login. But really, we're just using it to set up this secondary user, and hopefully you won't need it beyond this functionality. With that said, here's the process to follow once you've set yourself up with a secondary email address. Start by pressing the Windows key and type in Users. Press enter on add, edit, or remove other users, or you can click on it. In the new window, select add someone else to this PC. Click on, I don't have this person's sign in information. This will allow you to create a new Microsoft account. Enter the email address for your new user. And this is the throwaway address we just talked about setting up, not your primary email address. Now create a password for this user. You can make it anything you want as long as it's something you'll remember. In this instance, I'm going to use secondary user 123 as my password. Now enter a name, country, and a birthday. This doesn't need to be your real information. Now check your secondary email address for the confirmation code and enter it in the window. You may have to pass an I'm not a robot test. Otherwise, your user setup is done. Now, the way you actually launch a second instance of the program is to hold the shift key and right click on the icon. Then choose Run as a different user. Unfortunately, this won't work from the Start menu, as you can see. So my suggestion to make this easier is to create a shortcut on your desktop and run it from there. Once you have your shortcut in place, hold Shift, right-click, and choose Run as different user. Now you'll have to enter the credentials you set up. Please note, Windows is going to want the email address for the username, not the actual name of the user. So click on More Choices, and select Microsoft account. Now you can enter the email address and the password that you chose during setup. And honestly, that's it. Now you have a way to launch a second instance of your ATEM software control. And now you can fill your screens with whatever you need to help run your live streams, recording sessions, or whatever awesome creative video uses you've found for your ATEM. I hope this tutorial was of some value to you and please remember to like and subscribe if it was. And let us know in the comments what other ATEM tutorials you'd like to see in the future. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time here on Quick and Easy Quickies.